Welcome to Boom or Bust episode two, the series where you design speaker enclosures, I 3D print them and we put them head to head to see who is the loudest. Episode two is the first one where we're looking at user submitted designs. Last week, the first episode was just my little benchmark aeroported box here that I designed. And this design has been sent in by a gent called Derek. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you look at this is how freaking massive it is. It is a chunky boy compared to the benchmark aeroported that I printed last week. You also notice something interesting if you look inside. You can see here that the port, instead of maintaining a constant area throughout its length, we have this triangle at the top here, which kind of expands as like a second chamber or an expansion to the port area. Very interesting. I looked at this and thought, I'm not too sure how that's going to perform. Is that going to act a bit like a sort of second chamber, like an ABC box? Or is the total area of the line going to kind of even out to something in between? that and that i don't know he sent in a bunch of designs and this one was the one that i thought looked most interesting and i kind of wanted to see how it sounded now with it being so monstrously huge i suspect that it's not going to be as loud as the little aeroported box but it's probably going to clamp way less power it's probably going to be way more efficient but we're going to reach the mechanical excursion limits of the driver much much sooner than we did in the much smaller aeroported box here as to how that will translate in terms of db reading with the cabin enclosure here not too sure but i think the first thing to do is to get this on the dayton dats v2 drop an impedance sweep and see exactly what this box is doing to this driver driver across the range of frequencies. So the first thing that you notice is that the overall shape looks quite similar to what it did on my aeroported box. However, the initial impedance spike is way less, it's way lower. Um, and the impedance valley here where the box tuning should be is much higher. So there's much less of a difference between the initial spike and then the following valley. Um, then we've got a massive spike on the second spike up here at about 145 hertz. So what this looks like here is the box tuning appears to be around 92 hertz there which is monstrously low if that was scaled that would be about 15 hertz box tuning frequency um, and then because the box is so massive the port load isn't actually holding the cone very still because it's such a huge box so that's why the valley isn't that steep it's not very low here it's actually relatively similar to the impedance peak we get under tuning frequency as the woofer starts to unload and the port stops working there's not a huge difference between these two as we move up away from box tuning frequency we get to this impedance spike here which is where the port stops working and the box starts transitioning more to like a sealed enclosure the port just kind of disappears from the uh, fluid dynamics of this setup and we get a big impedance peak at about 146 hertz which will mean that the driver moves very freely at this point it'll require very little power because the air spring inside the enclosure at that frequency is kind of moving and aiding the cone at that frequency the cone isn't having to fight against the air spring or any port loading it's literally just in perfect resonance harmony with the air spring in the box at that point and that is actually the lowest frequency that we test at about a 150 hertz so i imagine that that might be loud-ish, but we're going to see a lot of cone movement for barely any clamped power at this point. As we continue up the range, you can see the impedance drops again as we come away from that air spring. And we're now so far away from box tuning frequency, this is going to be behaving very similar to a sealed box up here. But it's so huge that I don't think it's going to produce a great deal of output. And it's probably going to suck quite a lot of power to produce any real output up above sort of 200 hertz here one interesting thing to note is that if you tune your box dead on woofer fs then you get this perfectly equal impedance sweep graph where you've got the valley dead in the middle of the two peaks which is kind of similar to what we saw with my benchmark aeroported box i didn't tune dead on woofer fs but it was closer than it is with this one if the box is tuned much lower than the woofer's fs then you get the valley shifted much more to one side on the lower frequency end and then the peaks aren't as equal and the same would happen if you tuned above fs quite considerably you'd get that kind of higher impedance peak maybe a bit lower and you get the value much closer to that side um, than the lower one it's not necessarily optimal to tune your box to woofer fs doesn't actually mean that that's the best place to tune your box it depends on the driver and the setup and what your goal is but in terms of when you're looking at an impedance graph yeah it'll look very symmetrical if you tune to the woofer fs 
Yeah, cool. Pretty interesting stuff. So I'm sure you're dying to see what this sounds like in the cabin. So we're going to whack it in the box here and um, play some tracks. And I'm probably going to play some really low frequency stuff, some really, really heavily slowed bass tracks, just to really emphasize what this box is uh, probably going to be best at doing. So yeah, as you can see, it moves plenty of air at the lower frequencies. It really slams the lows very nicely. The woofer was moving a lot during that whole test on the lower frequencies. There is not much cone control going on there, but it does definitely move some air thanks to the efficiency of it being a larger box and also thanks to the Helmholtz mode of this being around about 146 hertz definitely helps out to make it look impressive and sound cool on the lows. On the higher stuff though, I played woofer cooker and even the bottom note of woofer cooker just wasn't as loud and potent and didn't move the kind of fabric across the door as much as it did with my much smaller aeroported box here. And this thing just generally sounded a lot more punchy and like accurate than this one did. And it had a lot more control over the cone than this box did, which is to be expected. Okay, but now the real test. What kind of numbers does this throw up on the SPL lab meter? So as always, we're going to start off by testing driver's door open, giving this cabin a Helmholtz mode and a quarter wave mode. So let's give it 25 scaled hertz, which is 150 hertz, and see what it does. And remember, we're going up to either mechanical excursion limit or 15 watts on the power meter. That is ridiculously efficient. That was two watts on the power meter. I don't think we were quite at mechanical limit yet, but already a 139.8. That 
was 4.4 watts and a 145.2 dBs. Wow, that's pretty much the same as what it was with the Benchmark Aeroported box here. So the Helmholtz mode definitely doing its job and much more efficient movement here because the box is so big, it, the impedance rise is so high at this lower frequency here. And that's that massive spike you saw on the impedance sweep graph on that. So yeah, very efficient, pretty loud, but um, definitely we're right at the woofer's mechanical limit there. We're not even at 15 watts, but I can't, I wouldn't be able to get over like six watts. It would just rip itself apart. Okay, let's move on to 33 scaled hertz. Now this is a 198. <laughs> There's 15.1 watts and also kind of mechanical limit at the same time. We've got a 137.0. Okay, 45 scaled hertz, a 270. This is the point where I suspect it's going to drop off quite a bit. There we are, 15.5 watts there and we've got a 129.1. One. Okay, lastly, we have the 60 scaled hertz, a 360. That's 15.8 watts. We've got a 131.2. So yeah, that is actually quite a bit better than we were doing with the aeroported box. And that could be to do with the geometry inside this enclosure, doing something cool up at the sort of scale 60 hertz mark. Or it could be the fact that this enclosure is just that much bigger. It takes up more volume in the cabin. Therefore, it changes the acoustic properties of the cabin itself, maybe giving it some kind of cool ring at around about the 60 scale hertz mark. All right, now let's close off the door and uh, test again with the cabin completely sealed off. A 136, I can actually hear some, some very nasty sounding mechanical sounds there. You can hear the stretch of the um, spider is just is at its limits there. 15.1 watts and a 130.3. Fifteen point seven watts and a one twenty six point six. Oh, I overshot the uh, power limit a little bit there. Fifteen point oh one watts and a one twenty five dead flat on the nose. And one last frequency, just for a bit of fun, this isn't gonna to count towards the average, but I want to see what this does at 15 scaled hertz, which is about 90 on Audacity here, because that's where the impedance sweep suggested this enclosure was kind of tuned to. So let's have a look. Oh my gosh, we've got tons and tons of driver excursion, not much output and a 130.3. So yeah, it just goes to show that although this box might be on paper tuned to sort of 15 scaled hertz, doesn't necessarily mean that that's where it's gonna be loudest when you put it in a cabin. And that actually mirrors what Hexibase said in his latest video as well. It's not necessarily about the tuning frequency, it's about the overall response of the driver in the environment you want to put it in. And I only managed to get to about 10 watts there on the watt meter uh, with the uh, woofer absolutely flapping around like mad there. So testing is over and the results are in. With the door open, Derek V5 gets a 135.6 dB average and with the door closed gets a 129.4 dB average, putting him above the benchmark aeroported box into first place. So although this enclosure was A, wildly oversized for the driver and B, had an interesting expanding port thing going on inside there, it actually bettered a, what I would call more sensible sized aeroported box here. Although this definitely had much better control of the cone and would be probably easier to drive with um, average music and stuff, you wouldn't have to set such a wild filter network on it. But it's possible that this result hints to a couple of things. Firstly, it might actually be more beneficial to be closer to the woofer's mechanical limit than to be closer to the amplifier's clip limit or to the woofer's thermal limit of the voice coil because that larger enclosure just makes everything much more efficient. And another thing is that obviously this box being so much bigger it takes up more space in the cabin therefore raising the Helmholtz mode specifically of this closer to that higher frequency and I think it's definitely that bump on the 60 scaled hertz that gave Derek's box the edge over my benchmark aeroported and ultimately brought the average up to uh, better it. 
If we did these tests again, but we upped the available power we have to the driver to about 30 watts, I think the results would be very different because we already kind of at mechanical limit here with this box on a few of the frequencies, but with the aeroported box here, we had a lot of headroom, especially on the lower frequencies in excursion, and we could throw loads more power at the driver before it started to complain, bringing that low frequency score sky high. I could see a 150 out of that. One thing that might be interesting to do in the future is to actually put a much larger driver in Derek's box, a driver that more suits the size of this enclosure, which is this little three inches of Goodman's that I've had for years, and this scales to an 18 inch. So you can see there that that looks a lot more sensible, a lot better scaled with the enclosure, and uh, that might actually perform really, really well, especially on those lower frequencies. Maybe not so much on the higher stuff because it's so far away from tuning, but yeah, that's going to be a windy monster with the, with the 18 inch in there, I think. So that might be something to visit in a future season. If you think you can do better than Derek here with his V5 enclosure, then there is a link in the description to a video with all the instructions that you'll need to design and submit an enclosure for this series. If you're interested in sponsoring this series, either by having a branded logo on the test setup or a sponsored message or segment, then there's an email address in the description as well. Get in touch. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'm looking forward to what other wacky designs you guys can create and send my way. Stay tuned for episode three coming next week.